Magic Tree House, Book Number Thirty One, Warriors in Winter by Mary Pope Osborne. Chapter Nine, March. From the future, said Jack. He and Danny looked at each other. How could that be? That's amazing, Annie said to the Emperor. Unbelievable, said Jack. I do not understand, said the Emperor. Is this a sign from the gods? A gift from Mars? Perhaps it means that the Legion should confront the enemy on the frozen Danube, take them by surprise, and stop their invasion. Sounds like a good plan to me," said Jack. "It does," said Annie. The Emperor looked at them with wonder. "I do not know what to say to you," he said. "I would like to talk further about your country, your tribe. Perhaps you can stay a while with the Legion. I feel you may have much to teach me." "I'm afraid we can't. We have a family back home," said Annie. We really need to be home by moonrise," said Jack. "Ah," said the Emperor. "I understand, but I am sorry to hear that the moon rises early in winter." The centurion Junius entered the tent. "My lord Aurelius, the warriors are waiting. Shall I cancel the parade?" "Of course not," said the Emperor. "My honored guests, Jack and Danny, will march with you." We will. Oh no! Thought Jack. Wait here, the Emperor said to Jack and Danny. He stepped outside to talk with Junius. I hope he doesn't want us to carry shields and weapons, Jack said to Annie. Or wear an armor, said Annie. No way, said Jack. We need an excuse. The Emperor returned. Go with Junius, he said to Jack and Danny. He will show you what to do. Oh," said Jack. Before he could think of an excuse, Junius beckoned for him and Danny to follow. The centurion led them out of the tent. They silently walked with him back to the parade line. Jack's heart raced. We can't march, he thought. We're too small. We're not strong enough. At the field, the legion was still standing in formation, waiting for the order to march. Junius walked over to the standard bearer and flag bearer. He turned to Jack and Danny. The emperor has ordered that the two of you shall carry the eagle standard and the flag. Which one of you wishes to carry the standard? He said. Oh man! Thought Jack. He knew this was the highest honor a Roman warrior could have. You should carry it, he said to Annie. No, you, she said. You deserve it more," said Jack. He looked at the centurion. Annie's very brave, and she never loses hope. The standard bearer handed the eagle standard to Annie. "Wow, thanks," said Annie. She held the pole high and smiled. The gold eagle's wings shone in the cold sunlight. The flag bearer handed Jack the flagpole. Jack raised it beside the eagle standard. The red flag with the ram flapped in the winter wind. Trumpet sounded. "You are to lead the legion once around the field," Junius said to Jack and Danny. "All the soldiers will follow you. March!" Jack and Danny marched around the field with all of Legion Gemina, fourteen, following them. Annie carried the eagle standard. Jack carried the red flag with the ram. They were followed by trumpet players, who were followed by centurions, who were followed by thousands and thousands of Roman warriors. Jack and Danny returned to the emperor. They gave the standard and flag to Junius. Well done," said Emperor Aurelius. "I know you must leave us now. I will ride with you as far as the river bank." The emperor gestured. To a warrior standing beside a beautiful white horse, the horse had a red blanket draped over its back. The warrior led the horse to Jack and Danny and helped them climb on. Jack took the reins. Emperor Aurelius mounted his black horse. 
As both horses started toward the gate, Jack gripped the reins and Annie held on to Jack. The white horse carried them down the main road, past the armory, past the rows of barracks, and out through the front gate of the Roman legion camp. Chapter 10 Hail Home Not far from the Danube River, the emperor dismounted. He helped Jack and Danny down from the white horse. Thank you for letting me carry the eagle, my lord Aurelius, said Annie. You need not call me that outside the camp, said the emperor. You may call me Marcus. Thanks for helping us, Marcus, said Jack. You're welcome, said Marcus. I hope you learned about the Roman legion today. We did, said Jack. You guys are amazing, said Annie. We wrote a lot in our journals. The emperor smiled. Good, he said. I tell few people this, but I myself keep a journal. Really? Annie said. What sort of things do you write? Marcus paused for a moment. Perhaps I will share some of my thoughts with you, he said. He pulled his journal from a saddlebag. He read, Dwell on the beauty of life. Watch the stars and see yourself running with them. It sounds like poetry, said Jack. I love it, said Annie. Then perhaps you will like this too, said Marcus. I have begun a list of small things that have a special beauty for me. He read from his journal again. Fresh bread, ripe figs, wheat bending in the field. The face of a lion, the beauty of old age in men and women, the smell of wood smoke. Marcus looked at them almost shyly. That's an amazing list, Marcus, said Jack. A beautiful list, said Annie. Thank you, said Marcus. He sighed. I must leave you now and don my emperor disguise again. There are battles still to be won. Good luck, Marcus, said Jack. The emperor mounted his black horse. Jack handed him the reins of the white horse. Farewell, my friends, said Marcus. I bid you safe travels. Thank you, said Jack. You should keep riding, Marcus, said Annie. Your journal is really good. The emperor smiled again and raised his hand. Then he turned and led the white horse back toward the camp. Let's go, Jack said to Annie. They hurried to the tree with a hidden tree house. Look, Annie said. She pointed up. Jack saw the golden eagle perched high on a branch. Hi there, he said. Then he and Danny climbed up the rope ladder. They looked out the window together. They watched the emperor pass through the front gate into the camp. The eagle cried out from above and flew into the darkening winter sky. It's time for Marcus to be ruler of the Roman Empire again, said Annie. Yup, said Jack. He took his tablet out of his pack and put it on the floor of the treehouse. Time for us to be Frog Creek kids again. Right, said Annie. She set her tablet beside Jack's. We'll leave these for Morgan. Jack picked up the Pennsylvania book. He pointed to a photo of the Frog Creek woods. I wish we could go there, he said. The wind started to blow. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Then everything was still. Absolutely still. Hail home, said Jack. Pax, Annie said with a sigh. They were wearing their own clothes again. The sun was rising over the woods. Birds were singing. I hope Morgan likes our notes, said Jack, glancing at the tablets on the floor. I think she will, said Annie. We should head home now and hop back into bed. Yep, said Jack. Pretend to wake up when Mom calls us for breakfast. I hope Dad makes blueberry pancakes, said Annie. Best in the world, said Jack. Write it down, said Annie. They laughed, then climbed down the rope ladder and started through the woods. Jack felt a chilly morning breeze. 
I'm glad we don't have to be Roman warriors, he said. Me too, said Annie. But you know what's weird? What, said Jack, besides traveling through time and space in a magic treehouse and spending the day in a Roman legion camp? Annie laughed. No, seriously, she said. It's weird that the most important Roman warrior of that time made a list of small things of beauty. Yeah, said Jack. Not what you'd expect. I think that might be the wisdom we were supposed to learn, said Annie. Right, said Jack. So what would you add to the list, said Annie. Oh, maybe like... Jack looked around, sun rays slanting between the trees... Fiddlehead ferns, said Annie. Leaves dancing in the breeze, said Jack. That dove cooing, said Annie. The eyes of an eagle, said Jack. They came out of the woods and headed down the sidewalk. That black cat hiding in the bushes, said Annie. The Johnson's pug on their porch, said Jack. Hi, Pickles, Annie said in a loud whisper. Dandelions growing in a crack in the sidewalk said Jack. When they came to their house, they climbed the steps, crept inside, and tiptoed upstairs. See ya, they whispered to each other and slipped into their rooms. Jack changed back into his pajamas. Before he got into bed, he grabbed one of his books about ancient Rome. He looked in the index and found Marcus Aurelius. He found the right page and read, Marcus Aurelius was a Roman emperor from 161 to 180. He was a skillful military leader, but he is best known as a deep thinker who sought truth and wisdom. He recorded his private thoughts in a journal called Meditations. The journal of Marcus Aurelius is still read more than 1,800 years after his death. Below the passage, was a quote from Marcus Aurelius. When you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege it is to be alive, to think, to enjoy, to love. No problem, whispered Jack. He smiled as he put the book back on the shelf. He climbed into bed, closed his eyes, and waited for his mom to call him to breakfast. Pax.